This is the faculty exhibition for the Rockville campus, and each faculty member teaching studio art has a piece in this exhibition. We're all allowed one piece. Hopefully it's a recent piece so the students know that we're working. It represents painting instructors, drawing instructors, sculptor, metalsmithing, printmaking. And the idea is that students, first of all, know that we are real artists and we are really working. And then it's a learning situation where they can come in and get ideas and see different mediums because we go beyond what is traditionally used or what's necessarily taught within the classroom. I'm the co-curator for the exhibition along with Michael Sastry, who is a adjunct professor here, and we wanted to have both a full-time and a part-time uh, professor working on the exhibit. And basically, we just collect the art and we hang it. In this exhibition, it's fairly easy because all of the artists are right here. It's a fairly easy exhibition, and it's something we really like to do because we really are excited to see what everybody else is doing. The name of the piece that I have in this show is called A Double Portrait with Elsa and Couscous. Uh, Couscous is my daughter's chicken, and this is my nine-year-old daughter. I wanted to do an image that uh, represented her because I've been working with art um, based on my children for the last uh, nine years or so. She's nine years old, so that's how that goes. It's been really important to me to do the work based on my children in this time period because they change so grow so quickly. My piece is The Elders and it's a group of 12 people who are former states people. Uh, basically, they're retired. They have nothing to lose with putting themselves out there. The group was originally brought together by Nelson Mandela and it includes Nelson Mandela, Desmond Tutu, Jimmy Carter, Mary Robinson, a whole collection, there are 12 of them. They put pressure on different countries where there are issues of social justice, civil rights issues, ecology issues, and because they are not associated with any particular government, they can come together and do that. To make this piece, um, it's a charcoal image on just white paper. This piece, working with the charcoal, I started as a pencil drawing from the photograph and then started in with vine charcoal, which is a very soft, crumbly, light, kind of atmospheric charcoal. And it gives a nice beginning that you can take back, you can put more down, you can play with the surface before you really have to commit a whole lot. And then I laid in a compressed charcoal, which is very dark and rich and gives the nice blacks that you see in the image. Charcoal pencil for the very fine details like eyelashes, the lip line you can see is charcoal pencil. Just building up the values, meaning how light, how dark different areas are. The idea of the paperwork is that it's, um, it's very fragile like people are, and yet I try to get the, the strength of the character in, within the piece. My son suggested that I try doing the elders. It was a little departure for me because you have to be very specific on the faces on these 12 people. So that was a challenge. And it's the first time I've done the paper pieces in more than one color. And I did that because I wanted to get the integration of the races within the piece. When my first child was born, um, I was working full time at the time at the college. And I found that uh, I had a lot of stress because I hadn't learned to relax yet. And I was just with my child so much, I thought I could work on her. I'll do some drawings of her. That would be nice to record her. Then I realized how really precious that was to have those records. And I continued working that way. So all of the drawings that I've done, and I'm paintings as well of my children, these are images that to me are very much about, you know, being a mother and uh, recording for myself what I'm enjoying about my children and events that have happened that will have special meaning for me. 
I decided I would make a book for my girls. And I decided I'd make it a book about opposites with animals that they recognized, uh, that they were familiar with at that point in their life, so that they could um, say, oh, that's a cat, that's a dog, that's a frog, and recognize it. I painted my bathroom in 2008. So I thought I could do a mural and make it something that's pleasing to be in. So I painted a sky scene on all four of the walls and the ceiling. It was an enjoyable experience. It's much nicer taking a shower now. I first came to art uh, unexpectedly. I have a BA in history. And when my kids were young, I needed to get out of the house. I started taking art courses for the first time. And I took them at Montgomery College uh, with the portfolio that I developed here, I was able to go to American University with just the portfolio from here into graduate school. To me, that said a lot about who the teachers were here. Uh, they really gave me so much. I went to college at the University of Colorado in Boulder and then um, taught. I got an art education degree and I taught for six years uh, in Colorado, in New Jersey, and then in Wisconsin while I was going to graduate school there in Madison. I had to get out of the mentality that I'm a painter and had to get into the mentality that I'm an artist. What I feel like I've always brought to my teaching is that I, um, especially at the college level, there were things that I felt like I didn't get that I should have gotten. Um, ways things were explained that could have been simpler, um, more specific. You're not necessarily teaching what you focused on in education, which for me has been important because it has made me realize more uh, that uh, broadly who I am and what I'm able to do. If you don't really understand what art talk is, um, you need somebody to just explain that clearly. And same thing with how do you make an image. I'm hoping that's also what I'm bringing into my students, that they realize that, sure, this time they're taking drawing, but drawing isn't the whole picture, excuse the pun, uh, it's, um, it's part of the whole when they get through this program. If you don't know how to draw something representational and somebody just says, you know, just draw some things here, to draw what you see in front of you, um, be expressive. What does be expressive mean? You need somebody to walk you through and give you some exercises that show you. They're not going to be just a drafts person. They're going to do painting, they're going to do design. So when they leave here, they become artists. In my classroom, uh, we look at the artwork when it's due and I've talked to them about the work as they're making it, hopefully. And then we all talk about it as a group, and then they take it back home with them and make any changes they want, and then they bring it back in for a grade. That, I think, is one of the things that I was most um, bothered by as a student, that I felt like, uh, as I worked in ceramics, it's very hard to change something after it's been through the kiln. And I didn't feel like that was a fair thing. So I, I like that I can give my students that option to alter their work. The Rockville Art Department is the largest of the art departments at the college. It is a very broad program. The department's broken up into sections. We have the design and color section. We have sculpture, drawing, painting, printmaking, metalsmithing, ceramics. We've got a full range here. All of the faculty members are required to have an MFA. We have um, 14 full-time faculty. The remainder are adjunct. Um, all of them are highly qualified. All of them are very good artists, as you can see. I think it's a beautiful show. I think that, um, you know, every semester somebody turns in something different, and sometimes it's stronger, sometimes it's weaker, but I would say overall this is a really solid show. As a faculty, I think the diverse work that you see in the show is really a strong point for us. It's that whole broad age group that brings so much to the classroom. It's a wonderful, we're very fortunate to have a strong ethnic diversity that brings so much to the classroom also. So it's, it's a very special place. I can't think of a better place to teach, that's for sure. I have older students and younger students that become friends. I have students from different cultures that become friends. And it's really a beautiful thing. The instructors here really, really want to teach. And they want to be there for the students. They, uh, uh, 
and it really brings a richness to it. And, and I really think that that's, that's the big difference. It's how do I communicate with my students and how successful am I in getting the ideas across that they need to put down on the paper. That's why I love it here. There's a real focus on the students.